Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to another edition of In the Clouds. I am Chris Short, executive producer of this thing called OpenShift TV. I'm joined by two wonderful Red Hatters today. We're going to be talking about the Red Hat Marketplace. Uh, Katie Gilio is here and Lars Herman is here. Katie, would you like to introduce yourself? Tell us what you do here at Red Hat. Sure. Thank you, Chris, and happy to be here. Hello to everybody. Um, so I'm Katie Giulio. I am the product marketing lead for our Red Hat partner ecosystem, um, which means I work on the positioning of our certification offerings with our ISV and SI partners. And then I also lead the positioning for Red Hat Marketplace. And I get the chance to work with a lot of our IBM and Red Hat sellers in ways that we can better ensure that our OpenShift users unlock that value of open shift. So um, I'm really excited to be here and thanks for having me. Well, thank you for coming. I would like to note that Katie is even doing this while she's on PTO. So thank you very much, Katie, for coming on the air. You're welcome. Lars, how are you doing, sir? I'm, I'm doing well. Thanks, Chris. Uh, and uh, uh, thanks everybody for tuning in here. I'm glad to be here. Uh, my name is Lars Herrmann. Um, I'm uh, uh, responsible for the partner ecosystem uh, at Red Hat out of our products and technology organization. Uh, and it's, it's all about creating customer choice of lots and lots of solutions and technologies to use and driving success, not just for Red Hat, but for all our partners uh, in driving value to our customers and hopefully grow the business on the way. Awesome. So uh, we have a kind of icebreaker question we ask on the show here, and um, we were discussing it before we went live. And Lars, this is going to be difficult for you, but it's more easier for katie and i uh is cheesecake a cake or a pie and we asked that because it's not a clear like definition there although maybe there is so if you're asking me that question chris i i, I don't have a horse in this race uh, <laughs> because very simply put you, you might see the little flag in the background i'm from germany and <laughs> and i don't i don't think that the word pie in the English language is well enough defined to really be able to answer that question. It goes against the German desire for precision in the language. So I don't really know the answer to that. Fair enough. Katie, you have a dog in this fight, I feel like, right? Like I, I do. And, and I, and I did have an opinion when, when I first uh, thought about it. So I, I do think with a, with a cheesecake, when you have a cheesecake, it's uh, at the end of it, you really feel like you had a slice of a meal. And right. I, I differentiate that between a cake. A cake has that, that delicious end of meal, closing out the meal feel, but a cheesecake, you could almost just use that for your dinner. And then you can substitute it with some, you know, a pie it can be a meat pie. It can be a variety of different styles of pie. So I'm going to classify this as a pie versus a cake. Very well. Uh, cheesecake is my favorite dessert, so I don't care what you call it. I just eat it. Uh, <laughs> but Lauren, no, and I have I to do... say, my, unfortunately, oh, I have the uh, the lactose intolerance, so I had to give up Ooh, cheesecake a long time sorry. ago. Very I know. I, I I did have it when I was younger, and it was delicious. But yeah, uh, I just look at it from afar now. Yeah, like I'm not big on sweets for some reason, and yeah, that, maybe that's why. I don't know. Hmm. Um, so thank you for entertaining me for a second. I appreciate that. So what is Red Hat Marketplace? What is it designed to do? How does it help people? Sure, sure. Great question. Um, and, and really thrilled to talk to everyone about it today. So uh, really simply put, Red Hat Marketplace offers OpenShift users that ability to discover, to trial, to purchase, and then even manage uh, certified uh, container-based solutions from our, our ISVs um, and also from Red Hat and, and from IBM. Uh, we have about 75 and, 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 and gaining by the day commercial <laughs> offerings in marketplace um, that are across 12 different categories. So for AI, ML, uh, uh, data, databases, uh, DevOps, security, um, developer tools, big data storage, I mean, anything you, you really need in order to move workloads onto OpenShift. And, and, that's, and that's the purpose that um, the products within marketplace serve. Um, we work with such ISVs as Anchor, Cockroach Labs, uh, Couchbase, Dynatrace, um, uh, let's see, uh, MongoDB. So there's quite a variety mm -hmm. that we offer. Um, and, and these are commercial, right? So they're, they're not community. These are, these are commercial offerings. Right. 
but the thing to think about when you when you look at marketplace is yes, it's an it's an e-commerce um, offering, but within it is the most important part, right? Um, so that takes us a step back into talking about operators, and so when we had um, you know the 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 coming or the launching of OpenShift 4, what that brought us was Kubernetes operators. And while many of those in your audience might be well-versed, I have learned that not all OpenShift buyers are as well-versed in operators. And um, so even our team had to take a step back just to think about, okay, so right. when we start to engage with these OpenShift users, let's really talk to them about why they want to use operators. Um, and so what we, you know, what we want to ensure is that they understand, especially for developers and IT admins, um, that operators provide that ability uh, to rapidly and more, and more securely automate lifecycle management um, of applications and supporting infrastructure. So that means that that burden of managing manual tasks, uh, such as deployment and upgrades um, and backups is alleviated. Yeah. Uh, and that's really important. And I know, Chris, prior to this, you said you've had lots of experience in that. Um, because what we want, you know, an operator, what we want is that automation, right? right? And you want to be able to provide those that aren't as experienced, but can be experienced, um, and still be able to have agility, uh, reliability. And then it's just the simplicity of operating the day one and day two mm -hmm. operations across hybrid cloud um, without being an expert. Uh, and, and Chris, I don't know if you found that to be true, um, but that truly is that that benefit of using operators. I, I mean, the the operator pattern itself is incredibly powerful because it it sits there and it it's the reconciliation loop is what makes it joyful for for me, an old operator person, to say right like, hey, here's a mundane task. Let me just put this little bit of code, be it you know, go Helm. Ansible and bake it into an operator using the operator framework, which is a upstream C or incubating CNCF project. Um, and, and just have that mundane task taken care of me from that point forward, once I've applied the CR and, and, and not having to worry about it literally ever again, right. <laughs> unless, unless I upgrade, you know, a version of something and, you know, then I need to, you know, bump some updates into the, the operator itself, but absolutely. Um, it is an incredibly powerful pattern. And folks, there's a wonderful book about it. I dropped a link in chat uh, earlier, but if you didn't, please download it, check it out. You can get yourself started with the operator framework and you'll be off and running. Um, yeah, so the... So to add to that value... Right. That's why we have Marketplace. Right, so... Because within, within Marketplace, correct, you have the, the offerings that are there are certified operators from our partners that um, really help with the majority of workloads you're going to see moved on to OpenShift. Right. The... But it gives people, like, there's a trial for everything in the Marketplace, is there not? Right. Correct. So, yeah, Which is, it gives, it's an excellent customer experience. Um, when you go onto Marketplace, and Lars and I are going to show you a demo later, mm -hmm. easy to navigate um, and, and easy to discover whether you know the vendor you want to work with mm -hmm. or you need a solution within a specific area. Um, and when you start to take a look at all of the documentation that's provided from each of the partners, you become very well versed. And then every uh, partner product has a 30 day trial. And so you can spin it up on one of your OpenShift clusters, which I believe, uh, Lars, we're, we're going to do a little demo to show you how easy that is. Um, and then after the 30 days, it, it, it is the function of using a credit card to make a purchase. Um, there, are, you know, also there are some private offers. You can work with the partner directly as well. Um, but the accessibility of a variety of these uh products in one location is what makes the difference. Now, in a, in a very simple comparison to AWS and to Azure and, and Google Cloud with marketplaces, what you have though is the ability to use these products across any cloud um, in any environment that OpenShift mm -hmm. runs. So now you've got your portability, right? Um, and you have your choice. You're not locked in specifically to one cloud with one application. Um, you can now use any of these applications on OpenShift and across multiple clouds. Um, so that's the true uh, differentiating offer that we give to, to users. It, it's really nice too, because you get the same experience 
on premises as you do in your cloud provider and that that ability to say okay i need to try this out in both environments at the same time and give giving folks that capability to try before they buy is always 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 helpful right so we have to develop an ecosystem of partners and tooling and everything else that matters and we've got great stuff in there right now right like everything if you need postgres you need identity management we got you but why does the ecosystem matter, Lars? Why is that so important? Yeah, it's a it's a it's a great question, Chris. And and before, before I actually go there, let me let me add one more thing to, uh, mm -hmm. to the marketplace experience, um, because it's timely. Just two days ago, um, the the IBM team who was building the marketplace with us and for mm -hmm. us actually won a design award uh, for the marketplace oh, wow. um, for basically how easy it is, a simpler way uh, to explore everything. And that, that's, that's really an awesome validation of, uh, of our vision for creating like easy access to a whole inventory of things um, that can be used anywhere. Now to your question on the ecosystem, um, Red Hat's business fundamentally is a platform business and, and always have been, right? It has always, a has always been a platform. It started out with Linux, obviously. That was mm -hmm. a platform that you would run on hardware to then run enterprise applications or develop them. Uh, later, we got into the middleware business with JBoss, which again is a platform, right? So now the platform is cloud, broadly speaking. Um, and uh, you can you should absolutely think of AWS or Azure or Google as a platform. Right. And, um, and so is Red Hat OpenShift. So is Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And a platform really in itself doesn't do much for you. A platform's right. purpose is to light up something that you actually care about, right? The thing that creates real value. And, and that's how a platform adds value because from a developer standpoint, a platform allows you to leverage technology that you didn't have to write. Simply, exactly. right? It gives, you, it gives you capabilities that you don't have to worry about anymore. And same from an operations standpoint, we had the discussion about operators. Um, a good chunk of the operator value is, is the automation, right? one basically one click or one command line and suddenly a whole set of magic starts off that otherwise you would have to manually follow in a script um, and that is an example for how a platform adds value because the platform provides these interfaces that um, that anything that interacts with the platform can use in order to do its job now from a red hat point of view the ecosystem is incredibly important because it defines how useful our platform is simply right. speaking how many people do can we relate to how many people can be helped with getting their job done? From a customer perspective, I think it is, it is a little different because there is on one hand, of course, that desire of, I want access to a very broad range of things, ideally completely unconstrained. Anything under the sun I can find, I want to use in my, in my environment and I want that usage to be frictionless. I want that to be secure. I want that to be stable. I want that to be somewhat predictable. And I think mm -hmm. this, is, this is our um, model for building an actual ecosystem well, Red Hat really participates in two main ecosystems. We are on one hand in the open source community, oh, which yeah. of course is now the default innovation model, right? Or mm -hmm. creation model for almost anything. And, and that in itself creates an ecosystem, right? There are, there are people who are using technologies, people who are uh, participating in the discussion leading to the decisions. And of course, the people who write all this stuff. And similarly, we need a commercial ecosystem that builds on all that community goodness but now add certain attributes that are just important in a business environment or in an enterprise environment, such as who is making sure that if I, if I use technologies from 10, 20, 30 different vendors, right. these things actually work together. Like who's on the hook for that, right? right. You, can, you can assume that it might work because everybody has that as a shared goal, mm. but who's actually on the hook? And then uh, and if something goes wrong, who, who do you ask to fix it, right? That's, that's the other part in it, which, which is important. Um, and, uh, and then, of course, now it has gotten incrementally more and more and more important, the more solutions get connected. And now with cloud, it's really at a completely new level, which is security. Like, how can you mm -hmm. trust that the thing you're using is actually the thing you want to use and not something malicious that someone injected into your supply chain? Right. How do you use, how do you know that it's actually maintained and kept up to date? Um, and how, how can you trust that the vendors have the right policies? So I think that is, that is broadly why, why an ecosystem matters. It, it delivers value by what is in the ecosystem. It creates a certain predictable experience. And from a vendor perspective, 
um, it basically allows you to create business opportunity. It chases business opportunity. A lot of the partners that Katie mentioned earlier, they are in the marketplace because they see opportunity to serve their customers better, reach new customers, reach into markets that they might not be strong in yet. Basically, all ways to grow your business. So, so the idea in an ecosystem is, of course, win, 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 right? Everybody wins if we connect the dots, right? That's awesome. And sorry about that. My dog decided that she wanted to let the audience know she's feeling much better. Um, That's awesome. <laughs> so you mentioned frictionless and right. Like my background is in DevOps. I started working in Kubernetes pretty early on and reducing friction is like always a challenge. What have we done to kind of pop the lid on friction and say, no, you, you, this marketplace solution will give you a a more seamless kind of experience, one that you're going to enjoy more essentially, right? Like, cause friction creates anger, anger creates hate and hate leads to like a Yoda quote or something. Um, so yeah, what is some of that value add that we've put into the marketplace to give people that friction reduction? Yeah, let me, let me, let me, let me take a shot at this and Katie, I'm um, uh, happy to, to let you add uh, a perspective I would say in, in, this is 2021, right? And right. so friction, what is, what is actually friction? Let's, let's think about this for a second. Um, from a developer point of view, if I want to do something, I want to do it now. Mm -hmm. I want it to happen pretty much immediately. And I want it to go right the first time, right? And, and right. I think a lot of this, this experience is delivered very well in an as a service type experience, right? You go to, to something which is already basically running for you, you click a button and now you can access it with an API, with a secret, whatever. Um, we have embraced that as the goalpost for what we want a marketplace experience with OpenShift to be. Uh, we want software, even complex software, such as distributed data stores or mm -hmm. machine learning solutions. Th these are things that that, are, that have an inherent complexity to themselves. So they don't necessarily lend themselves out of the box to this sort of instantly available and ready for the job sort of pattern. What, what we have done, honestly, we've, we've combined the components that we already have. We have a platform, OpenShift, that can run any containerized workload. It used to be any containerized Linux workload. Now we're even breaking beyond the Linux boundary, uh, which we don't really need, but some people might like it. Right. Um, and I say this as a 20 plus year Linux guy, we've taken the operator framework that we talked earlier, which provides an awesome technology approach for turning a piece of software into an actual service experience because mm -hmm. the operator takes care of all the automation that is needed for that from provisioning, configuration, but also upgrading, scaling, managing resilience, and most importantly, as applications running on a distributed system, continue to run on a distributed system because right. the operator allows it to respond to any event that happens on the cluster, depending on how it's written, right? But theoretically, you could take it to that level. We call this the autopilot level. Um, and now the marketplace, what the marketplace adds is, is basically an experience that makes the ecosystem accessible through the journey that a human would actually take from, and I will, we will see this in the demo later, like I need a database, show me what you got. Right. I want a database with certain attributes. Can I filter that? Yes, you can. Okay, I want this one here, but I'm not ready to spend money. Let's go into the trial we talked about. I want to try it. Okay, now this thing works really well. I've written my app. It does what I want. Now I want to have the security of support and version updates going forward. I basically want the commercial version. And this is just one click away. And now you're running the commercial version, basically. Right. And all this uh, in an integrated experience that we want from a Red Hat point of view, and of course, we partnered with IBM on that. We want to be as easy as a public cloud experience without requiring you to run in any given public cloud. So right. you, you can do this on a public cloud. You can do this on another public cloud. You can do it on-prem. You can do it on the edge. You can do it on your laptop. We don't really care what it runs. Wherever OpenShift runs, mm -hmm. you get that experience. That's the simple approach. And that I think is the power of OpenShift to an extent, right? Like Absolutely. you have a consistent unified control plane where your apps perform or act the same and you have access to the same APIs across clouds to, you know, 
interact with Kubernetes or interact with your applications or interact with the marketplace itself. So, you know, there's a lot, on, you know, I'm scrolling through the marketplace pages. I'm seeing a lot of brands I see, you know, normally in the ecosystem of, you know, cloud native and everything. So what are the partners getting out of this, Katie? That's kind of my, my next question is if I'm a yes. partner, what do I get? Sure. And, and, and I was going to say, before I answer it, I just, I did want to add on to what Lars had said, Absolutely. which was, if you're talking about friction and we touched upon this a bit before we started the show, friction could also mean then working with your procurement teams when it comes right. to billing, right? So now you have, we are looking or we are attempting, I think we do a great job of it, of eliminating that friction with procurement as well, because mm. our our private offering, which is called Red Hat Marketplace Select, now ally, uh, uh, allows our the IT ops team to curate a selection of applications nice. and provide them into um, your your own marketplace, which I believe some companies are probably doing on their own. Right. Um, but I would bet that this would be a better experience. And so now you have um, the ability to pro to provide access to those who are who are monitoring the spend. They need mm -hmm. to see um, utilization of that application. Um, and, and while we don't have um, that complete utilization just yet, that's what we're working towards, right. um, but you would be able to see uh, how much of each product is being used when your annual contract is, is up. So mm -hmm. it, it now gives greater control to cost management or asset management. Um, right. But with that, that ability to remove the friction for those who want to just use the tools. Right. Um, so, yeah. And I think, Katie, thanks for adding this. I think this is a very important point. Uh, Chris, let me, let me jump in here, if, if Please. I may. Um, because I actually, I, I think cloud adoption has reached the state where buying and spend management is part or should be part of a cloud strategy. Yeah, so, exactly. Right? I, I, think, I think we're no longer at the pace. I remember like when cloud was new, um, it was seen from a procurement point of view as basically shadow IT. All right, mm -hmm. here's someone mm -hmm. doing something that we didn't endorse. Uh, the spending money in ways that we didn't want, that's mostly gone, right? I think now what we're seeing very intentionally crafted processes and relationships with cloud providers, with service providers, with vendors that, that are trying to really uh, manage the internal enterprise requirements around government, governance around costs, around security, uh, and combine this into a commercial model. But still there is that inherent friction for the team because they, they can do this in one environment one way, and they can do it in another environment, but the more environments you have, the, the more complex it gets, of course, and right. every one of them has their own little way of doing things. So there's the inherent friction of complexity, which mm -hmm. is another way to do it. I think we, we aspire definitely to address that. Um, well, many enterprises, they are large organizations, right? I mean, they have tens of thousands of, tens of, of thousands, individuals yeah. uh, uh, that are actually participating in the, let's say, technology-related activities, broadly speaking. It's not just all mm -hmm. development and operations. And so just being able to create the agility for all these teams to be able to access the technologies they need to get their job done at the time when they need it without having to ask for permission, fill out a bunch of forms, wait for an answer. And, and I mean, all these things can basically be automated in the marketplace. And we believe this is, is going to be a, a strategic value to our customers because right. they can implement a set of internal processes and policies that um, aim at, I want to be intentionally flexible with where I build my applications, what I'm using for them. So it's mm -hmm. that ecosystem uh, dimension we talked about earlier. And at the same time, be able to delegate control within the organization because that delegation creates autonomy. Autonomy creates agility and agility creates value, right? That's in, in the end of the day, that's I think how, how many organizations think about that. So we cater to this. It's still early, I think, with containerized software. Oh, yeah. We're not necessarily at that stage yet where this is the major mover needle, uh, needle mover. I think right now it's more about facilitating adoption, facilitating uh, initial impact, but it will hopefully quickly grow into that, into that dimension. And we okay. do have one, um, we, we have multiple customers that are now using Select, but we have one that is public. Um, so Anthem is one of our OpenShift customers and, and, and purchased Select for just that purpose or is, is planning to do it for, for that purpose of having you know, a digital centric approach um, and that they can provide more of a private, as they called it, provide a, a, a 
private developer centric location where then the developers are just allowed to innovate products and services. So right. um, they, they saw a, a value in it um, and, uh, and others within various different industries are also going, yeah, right. I, I get it. I understand what I can use this for. Well, I mean, now I remember contracting at like big banks and stuff and they would have like, oh, if you want a, a MySQL database, this is the Ansible playbook to pull down and use. There's a whole role to install it and get it set up how you want it. Now it's just go to the marketplace or the select marketplace and pick the default tool that we use that is fully supported. That's right. <laughs> and you have the reduction in friction between you and your finance team because now you're talking the same language essentially. Uh, and it's a single bill, right? Like, it's not like we try to do, like, if you have 14 partners in the marketplace, there's 14 different bills. We try to consolidate all that, don't we? Correct. Yep. That, no, that is the additional benefit of having that. Absolutely. I mean, when um, you tell your finance teams that, hey, I'm going to have one place to get all my software from, they really, really compelling. like that. <laughs> you know? yeah. And it's, and it is, and it, I think it's important. It is inclusive of different models of how commercial things are offered, right? So you can do proprietary licenses, mm -hmm. check. You can do like metered offerings, like on-demand um, services typically, but also software increasingly can be offered now this way because we're using uh, the built-in metering capabilities of OpenShift. So software vendors can offer their own products in a as pay-as-you-go motion where in any environment, which uh, is a little scary from a vendor perspective because the predictability of revenue gets a little lost in that system, but it's super convenient to customers, right? So right. We're, we're, we're looking for this to become very important. And, and we're also basically offering now um, uh, basically the ability to buy certain software as a service offerings from vendors that are popular with developer teams. So they get to this everything you need or everything mm -hmm. you might need you can pursue uh, and purchase in, in one model and then have that delegation into the org and the frictionless adoption. So, so we believe that's a lot of value. That That's a ton of value in my opinion, right? Like I wish this was around 10 years ago, <laughs> right? Like, that's right. I, I mean, this is going to save people so much time and so much heartache and just toil, right? Like that's where, you know, Redhead I think is very good about breaking down toil into manageable pieces. Um, so I didn't Go answer ahead, the question, but <laughs> back to oh, the yeah, partner that's right. value. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's okay. Um, so the, the the partner value. So we we've been working in many many years with a lot of these partners that are featured on marketplace. So this isn't this isn't new for us, um, and they've had their their applications featured in our ecosystem catalog, which we, we still have. And that has our certified hardware, software, and also our cloud services. And, um, but it's not e-commerce, right? Quite simply, right. it's not e-commerce. So when um, IBM came into the, into the fold, I guess is, is the way to put it, um, or you can say when they purchased <laughs> Red Hat, um, we then got the opportunity to work with them to build an e-commerce offering. And so what does that offer now? Well, our partners have a digital route to market that we couldn't provide them in the wow. past. And yeah. so this is, it's, it, it's excellent. I mean, they, they've, our, our partners are um, very dedicated and they've built these operators for their applications. And we want to give them the ability to have that awareness, mm -hmm. um, the ability for consumer um, discovery. A customer discovery, right? So that they, in the first step of the process, a customer can go into one place and to be able to look at a variety of offerings. Um, we also, they get the chance to work with new IBM clients, quite honestly. Um, I mean, they mm -hmm. do have that opportunity now um, for IBM clients that are becoming more focused on hybrid cloud and they're part of that mix. So there's, there's quite a few um, Offerings. We we also do have co-sell incentives. We have co-marketing programs. Um, but the the bigger opportunity of having that e-commerce uh, and and the ability to have larger awareness and probably greater spend within a customer base that they they wouldn't have been able to have before is really important and working well for them. Yeah. Let me let me let me add one 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 dimension to this, Katie. I think you did an excellent job in describing the business opportunity dynamics around this. And, mm -hmm. and as I said earlier, this is a huge part of why someone might participate in, in such a digital environment and in an ecosystem. There is another point of view in this that I just want to be transparent about because uh, we, are, we are talking openly about this with our partners. Um, if 
any software business, and of course, increasingly now, software businesses are not just driven by traditional software vendors, right? We see more and more actual enterprises who used to be more from a vendor point of view, a customer, they would buy our stuff. Right. They are now getting themselves into software offerings because mm -hmm. they, they develop intellectual property and then they, someone asks the question, can we monetize that? And often the question answer is yes, of course. And this is how many in innovative industry solutions are created. So basically, but any, any software vendor fundamentally has to ask themselves three questions for their business in a cloud point of view. There's the question of on how many clouds do I need to be to reach all my customers? Mm, right. right. So that, yes. that's, that's the addressable yeah. market question. And, and there is a severe cost to this. You typically, any software vendor for the entire history of the software industry has always made a decision of, I want as many platforms as I possibly can support, but there is the constraint of how many can I actually support, right? And cloud works the same way. It is actually expensive to being able to have your offering on AWS, on Azure, on Google, and on a bunch of regional clouds. It gets prohibitive very, very quickly. Um, so there's that dimension, addressable market. Then there's the second dimension, which is strategically, what do you want to run your business? Or I think we have seen as these, as these public clouds, we call them hyperscalers because they are hyper. Um, as they get into more and more technologies, more and more industry solutions, they actually start to compete with their vendors and partners on that environment. And if you, if you want to get an example, talk to anyone in the retail business, how inclined they are to run their business on AWS, which who they probably see Amazon, the retail operation is one of their chief competitors, right? So there are these also strategic considerations. We have seen that um, AWS in their desire to serve customers and offer innovation, mm -hmm. they are offering services of popular open source technologies that happen to have vendors that drive these technologies who are now suddenly find themselves in a compete relationship with the platform on which they run. That's not a great position to it's be in. It's almost overnight in some cases too, right? It, like, exactly. Yeah. So in, if, if something like that happens, you want to be, you want to have a plan B, right? You want to, mm. you want to have, you want to have options. And, and I think if you have built in hybrid cloud choice into your strategy, then that gives you options, whatever they are. And then, and I think the third dimension is also, the innovation component. I mean, uh, any any software business, the life cycles, if you look at product life cycles, I'm a bit of an economist when it comes to this. Product life cycles have shortened dramatically. Oh, yeah. They're, 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 they're maybe now measured only in years, in some cases, even less than that until they get replaced by something better. That's just the rate of innovation. So if you if you look at it from that point of view, your ability to innovate and deliver differentiation depends on your own creativity and your resourcing and your funding, but also on your ability to leverage innovation that's happening out there. And if Google tomorrow comes out with some super awesome machine learning capabilities mm -hmm. that you want to use, and now your entire app is written against, let's say, Azure, not here to bash AWS all the time, then you will have a hard time tapping into this because there right. are integrations, right? If you are already on Google and you're already familiar, your engineering team is familiar, you know how to deliver a service and quality there, it is much easier to tap into this. So there's, there's also that strategic element to hybrid cloud. And, uh, and I really see a lot of vendors who didn't have to worry about most of this. They're really getting pressure now from their customers, as we said earlier, who now make the intentional choices I don't care where you run your software, but I care where my data lives. I want my data to be in Azure because I trust these guys and I have some extra arrangements with them. Now, if your thing doesn't run on Azure, you have a problem, right? So I think there's, there's a lot of these dimensions where from a vendor point of view, just getting to hybrid cloud is a huge value. And then on top of that, you add that digital road to market that Katie talked about, that actually makes it real, right? Um, and I think that's, that's the promise that we deliver. That said, it's still fairly early. If you look at the inventory in the marketplace, which, which we're going to do in a minute, I guess, um, is very focused on the application development set of use cases right now. We are working with many of our partners that are actually more driving business solutions to also become available in that, in that same motion. So it's not just targeting developers. It's also for just uh, enabling the enterprise at large uh, to run platforms and solutions, to just help them to run their business better and develop innovative applications. Awesome. Is there anything else we want to mention before we dive into the demo? No. I yes, think. I do have one oh, biggest quick point, which is the marketplace right now is only available to North American customers. 
So ah, just want okay. to keep that in mind for those who are listening. For now, yeah. For now, we have geo expansion in our plans um, and, and hopefully we'll be able to announce more soon, but just want to keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. But then we can go off awesome. to the demo. Yes, let's try it out. Let's see what this marketplace thing's all about. And now, uh, Chris, I can start with sharing my screen, correct? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, wonderful. Um, so for everyone, I am going to just show um, more of the navigation and what you're able to see and find and discover. And when we start to move into uh, actual seeing the use of a trial on a cluster, then Lars is going to take it from there. So I am going to now share my screen. Ah, the screen sharing dance. There we go. And here we are. And I'm guessing at this point, we are all good. Mm -hmm. I see the marketplace, yes. Okay, great. The only thing I cannot do is move this lovely little function here. Oh. It's because I'm not a Zoom user. I'm sorry. It but that's okay. Be, unless you're in the browser, it should be movable. I don't know. I really don't know. Mm -hmm. We'll, we'll, we'll leave it there for now, not to okay. disrupt anything. Um, so when you start to take a look here, as Lars mentioned, um, we did recently receive a design award, uh, both those that are working um, on the IBM side, the design team, and also those uh, team members on Red Hat as well. Uh, very simple aesthetic here and, and user interface. The, I think one of the best features is the beginning, right at the top here. Right, Anything search. you want to find is is right there. I mean, it's very simple. It's it's, a, it's almost a Google like, right? Google esque. Um, so if there's, for instance, if you're looking for uh, Dynatrace, and you type in, and immediately you now have your tiles featured of what's available from Dynatrace. And that's just a simple example of looking for one specific vendor. We can opt out of that. And now we can return back to um, our, our storefront. And there are many different short videos slash documents that talk about how to use Marketplace. Um, you can see those featured here. What's new within Marketplace is also um, yeah. updated. I love the fact we that it has then, a blog associated with it. Sorry to interrupt, but yes. It, it does. Yes, it does. And that, and primarily because we have a lot of uh, updates within the site, um, and that's the best way for us to get the information out. So yes, we, we do have a blog as well. Um, you can see that when I mentioned we have the 12 categories featured here. Uh, so very simple. Again, if you're looking for a use case, uh, you can quickly click on a use case here, and then you can then access the information that you need. So if I go over to say database, now you're gonna see the list of those available within, we have 17 products featured here, and I'll get a little bit into more, all of the um, various different information featured within each one, but I'm just taking a quick look. You can also, um, in a, in a nice user experience here, be able to uh, also break it down into various things you're, you're seeking. And so you can look for various trials, how you're going to purchase um, ratings. We do have uh, user ratings that are also noted here. And then it goes back to, so you can filter by vendor as well. So um, it, yeah, very easy to use. So now I'll go back and I am loving how much my phone wants to pick up my conversation. Um, and the other thing that we feature, if I go back to the storefront that I wanted to show was we have data sets. We got about 120 different data sets as well. So wow. this is new. This came out, oh goodness, I think maybe September of ours. Did we talk about data sets in no, September? No, I think, I think they came around, around the new year. September. The new year, yeah. I, oh, right, okay. correct. We went fully We GA live in the future. In September. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's just been one of those years, right, that just keeps on going. <laughs> Um, but we did um, announce data sets, you're right, around the beginning of this year. Another great feature um, for, for those that, for developers who are looking to find something very e easy to look at, um, I mean, easy to use. And so there's a wide variety of data sets. And I, I believe in the next half of the year, I'm going to add more. Um, I think those are going to be more of a paid service. But right now, our data sets are free. 
And then uh, as you can see, we start to now looking, we dive deeper into each one of the uh, use cases. So let me just take a look here. Um, I'll just grab one, let me go with Couchbase. So you take a look here into Couchbase. And as I mentioned, um, very rich documentation within this section. This is what we're really most proud of and easy to navigate. Straight away, you'll see up on the top, you've got the ability to do your purchase or your trial. Um, you've got access to all of your reviews, take a look um, and be able to actually see uh, user information. It, it, complete overview of what it runs on. Um, on the left, we have all of the certification standards that are met, um, what level of operator does this also deploy? Um, and then you start to go into you know, more of the pitch about the partner product and, and offering, and then you have your pricing. So it tells you how many cores, um, what you're gonna need, what kind of subscription it is, and then you can click to view all of our pricing options. So if I click on that, give you even more. So now you're going to see, okay, you have your free trial that you can access for the 30 days. And then you have your two different um, offerings based on what it is that you're looking, depending on the amount of cores that you need. Um, and so that, it also gives all of the terms for the license agreements. Um, and if you need any questions that you want to ask as well, we have an FAQ section, um, but you can also at any point ask a question within our support section. So very simple. I'm going to stop right there, Chris, though, because um, I, sure. as, a, as a user, maybe you might have some questions that I haven't quite answered yet or features that I haven't shown. Um, so, I mean, you've, you've covered more than I could possibly imagine, but the, I am curious, right? Like, where do the ratings come from? I know they come from users, but like, are they like in their console on their cluster and say, oh, this is awesome. Or are they doing it in the marketplace? Where is that happening exactly? Yes, that's a really good question. So um, I am going to okay. respond in what I believe, although I, I might say, um, Lars, if I'm wrong, let, let me know. But I, I do believe you can, you can provide a, um, a, a review here, but I do think it happens in the OpenShift console within OpenShift. Is that correct, Lars? No, it's actually, it's, uh, it's, it's, an, it's an aggregator service that, that we're yeah. tapping into uh, that speaks to the technology and the product more broadly. Um, and because we didn't necessarily just want to limit the, I want to follow the lead of other people to the re still relatively small community of OpenShift users out there, right? A lot of these technologies, they have very broad reach. And so we didn't, we didn't want to exclude that from that point of view. Uh, OpenShift is a great place to run these things, hopefully the best place to run this thing. But uh, many of these technologies are used in kind of cloud native environments and even beyond that uh, broadly. So uh, they, they mostly come from a um, kind of, a, as I said, an aggregator that looks at lots of different places where review is happening. We're looking to build that out uh, within the experience, as I said, Katie, within OpenShift itself. Right now, we don't really have that in there mm -hmm. yet. Um, and I think this is this is part of that functionality that we talked about earlier about how do you enable an organization today we focus on more of a policy based view of what is approved to use, how can you delegate budgets and approvals within the organization. I think when many many large organizations there is value in oh someone was successful with something give them a way to express that so other teams can follow that lead right and reuse that sort of knowledge i think this is clearly something we want to enable but uh, that's that's a little in the future it's one of the areas of improvement we want to build in in the future awesome and then from there i mean with with support um, again all of our operators that are available here in marketplace are certified on on red hats and mm -hmm. on OpenShift. so that means you have red hat support you have the vendor support and then you're also going to have ibm support here as well so you're, you're fully covered um and there is a full team that supports the marketplace um, out of ibm so uh, no question about if you have any challenges I'll quickly click on that, um, but you have full documentation as well, and then you could, and then it is case management. Nice. Now, in terms of if you want to create an account, there are multiple ways in which, if you already have a Red Hat account, you can log in with your Red Hat user account, which is fantastic. Um, and so, for instance, I have a Red Hat account, and so I can simply log in. I'm recognized. Um, and now the information 
So one account for everything. I simply added my password. And now I'm into and in accessing everything within Marketplace with a Red Hat account, which is fantastic. Um, if you have an IBM account, you can do exactly the same thing. And if you have, if you don't have either, then you can sign up for a Red Hat Marketplace ID. So there are three ways to enter this portal. Um, but for most, it, most practical, I would say, would be to log in with your, with your Red Hat account so all customers would, would use their existing ID to enter into, um, into the portal. And now you've got access to a variety of different offerings. And this, like for instance, I, I've downloaded and done a few trials myself, but you can start to see what, you're, what you have available, although I, it might've been some time. So at this <laughs> point is where I'll, I'll transfer it over to Lars because he does have um, an existing cluster and has a trial that he can, he can walk through. Unless there are any other questions that you have, Chris, on this. No, I don't have any more questions. Go ahead, Lars. All right. About then, uh, 13 minutes left on the hour here. All right. Now we will be in the hands of OpenShift to stay on time with that. Let's see how that works. Does that come through? You should yep, see sure a, a you beautiful, see? There you go. freshly provisioned OpenShift cluster that we, we put together for this. So I just wanted to um, show a little bit. What Katie showed was the experience on marketplace.redhead.com. That's the what we call the public marketplace. As, we, as, as she said, marketplace select. Um, is basically a customizable version for an enterprise with their own logo in there with additional controls. In any case, the architecture is the marketplace manages an inventory, manages, manages your purchases, your users, and it speaks to OpenShift clusters. So an OpenShift cluster can be hooked up to the marketplace. And by doing so, you now can access the marketplace from OpenShift itself. So I wanted to start with showing that. So if we go here into the operators, um, I can go into the operator hub, which shows basically all the software that's available uh, for instant deployment within this cluster. And you see the little tags here. It says community, marketplace, the mm -hmm. ones without tag are officially certified from these vendors. So I could go down here and subselect. okay, let's look at only what comes from the marketplace. And let's say I want to use a database. Katie used the database example. Mm -hmm. And let's say I'm really excited about operators. So I want, I want a database with these autopilot capabilities. Nice. So yeah, I don't yeah. have to worry about the distributed system aspects of these things. That gets me to uh, two, three. Couchbase. Katie showed Coachy, uh, Coachbase. So let me go into Crunchy. So I can basically click in here. I get a very similar UI to what I did uh, mm -hmm. with what Katie showed. And I can actually go out to the marketplace. This leads me out to the marketplace side, or I can install it from this cluster right away, right? So that's the experience within OpenShift. Um, now, similarly, I can actually go and in the marketplace, this is now my account, which I don't know if the same or different than Katie's, it could be. So in the marketplace, you have this workspace section where, where you can basically look at what is my software so I went in there like yesterday or two days ago and just hit the trial button for Crunchy. So you see, I have one product here, it says Crunchy, mm -hmm. trial, trial, Crunchy Postgres, trial expires 28 days. I can click on this thing. And now what can I do with this trial, right? That's the right. question. Are there any uh, limiting uh, features or anything, right? Exactly. Yeah. So, and now I'm basically getting into, into a side of what did I use that trial? And, and you see here, it is actually deployed on a cluster. So I, I basically took this from the marketplace UI. It, basically, I pressed this button here, install operator. Wow. So if you click that button, um, you now can choose well, that looks different, different channels or approval <laughs> strategies. And then you can choose one of the clusters that you have registered. So I have this cluster that I just showed you. And now I can just pick a namespace into which I want to put it. Um, of course, now this one is already running it, right? So it would have to right. be a different namespace. Then you click install. And then the operator magic takes off. And however long that takes, depends on the software, how complex that is, you have your thing running, right? So that's that's basically that experience. Similarly, I could go for the existing ones. Um, I basically see all my software inventory for each of these products. This takes a while. Um, so let me actually go back into OpenShift while this is loading. And if I go into the operator hub here, I can see the installed operators. Mm -hmm. See the couple, um, there's the marketplace operator itself which creates that connection so that these two things can talk to each other very, very securely. And here's my trial, Crunchy PostgreSQL in the MyTest namespace. So I can now go into this thing 
and for example, whatever, deploy an actual instance of a cluster of Postgres servers for my application, right? right. Um, and that way it could then also be made available to, uh, to developers, et cetera, et cetera. So it, I think it very much delivers that frictionless experience that we talked about. And all I have to do for this is I basically have to take an OpenShift cluster and connect it to the marketplace, which is actually a fairly simple step yeah, that you should be pretty straightforward. You need yeah. permissions on the on the cluster because, of mm -hmm. course, that thing is kind of running as a system level service on the cluster. Yeah. Um, so, but but basically, it's about a pull. Don't look at the secret. Oh, it's just the name of the secret. Good. Um, and then a, a few commands. We're going to make this experience a little more slick. Right now, it's still like following just a few OC commands, basically on the command line, mm -hmm. or, or you're locked into this cluster. But it is a really like it took me like three minutes, honestly, to 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 get this going, and yeah, then I could go in much. and. Um, and actually deploy software on that. So I, I think that's actually pretty cool. Um, and now yeah. as, a, as a result, I had my I had my clusters here. Um, it says AWS, right? You would you would of course have, as we just said earlier, any cloud, any environment, it would just uh, annot annotate this properly. I can go straight into the console of that cluster from here. Nice. Um, and of course I can I can detach that. So that's in a nutshell the experience. So really from the marketplace, you have a view of what are your clusters, what's going on them. Which is which is simple, and that's by design. We want that to be simple. Red Hat offers very comprehensive management tools. If you really want to manage everything that's going on in the cluster, like like Advanced Cluster Manager, um, and uh, and you can also basically see it on the cluster, which is is important to um, an end user because that makes it very accessible. But it's also important to a vendor, as we talked earlier, because now they are actually exposed out with the end users. They're in the real estate of the product, which which is a big 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 point for them. Uh, that they're out in, in the face of the user. Yeah, so that's that's what I, what I wanted to show. I'm um, happy to answer any questions on that. No, I mean, that, that was a very comprehensive review. I mean, what is what does the simpler process look like, right? Because I'm pasting in five commands seems pretty easy to me. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, 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 yeah, I, I would agree with that. I think we could, we could, of course, and we got this question occasionally: um, could a cluster pre-install that marketplace integration? Oh, okay, um, yeah, you know, So you could, yeah, you could potentially, but then, or I think we made OpenShift more modular with version mm -hmm. four than it was before, and that was intentional because customers want to control as to what's running there. And then, of course, you still have the secret account level exchange. We couldn't automate this away. So, but, they, but I mean, all, we are always open to hearing how we can make this experience better uh, and how we can make it more exciting. For sure. Awesome. All right. Stop sharing. Wonderful. So, you're going to increase productivity. You're going to, you know, create, you know, simpler hybrid cloud environments, like the creating a database distributed across my entire fleet is a couple clicks away. Right. And I can just start adding members as my clusters get spun up like this. This seems almost too good to be true. <laughs> right. Like what was the, what was the motivation from the, either the IBM side or the Red Hat side to like build this thing. Right. Yeah, I know it's a, I, it's a great question because I, I would say from a, from a, let me start off with the Red Hat side, because obviously I've been working with Red Hat for so many years, mm -hmm. uh, I think 18 plus now. Um, Red Hat has always been about choice and about openness and about somewhat being Switzerland uh, as in neutral to others. Right. Right. Um, and uh, so from an ecosystem point of view, that really means like, we will partner with anybody out there that our customers want uh, wants to wants us to work with. I um, mean, we, we're, we're simply speaking there. So that's where that openness thing came from. Now, obviously, hybrid cloud is now really real. I think hybrid cloud is a lot more real with containerized applications because containerization gives us the primitives that enable mm -hmm. consistency, portability, and that level of uh, let's say opinionation. In, uh, that allows us to automate things, right? So it really allows us to deliver a cloud service in these different environments. So that was the second ingredient. So openness plus containerization. Um, and then there's really that, that commerce dimension that Katie talked about, which is actually a business in itself, like selling someone else's products. That's a business and yeah. you need to be able to do this. And this is not, in full, in full transparency, this is not a business Red Hat has ever been in. So yeah. we have we, we we just don't do that. We have never done that. We don't sell other companies' stuff. Um, 
internally sometimes we're thinking that our own sales channels are not selling enough of our own product, not to <laughs> mention other companies' products. So right. we were actually looking, I was looking for um, how can we serve that need uh, while Red Hat continues to not be in that business. IBM in parallel, as they were working on the, okay, we're going to acquire Red Hat but then run it as a separate entity, basically. They had invested into a marketplace that was uh, re reusing many of the things that they had built for IBM Cloud. So that's where that comes from. IBM is in that business of selling other companies' products. And they, for example, they've sold a lot of Red Hat over the many years yeah. um, in, in that capacity. IBM also was already in that uh, digital business and they were in the cloud business with IBM Cloud. So they, they funded a new initiative um, around building a marketplace that is designed for hybrid cloud. And then as we got into the picture, we discussed, okay, how do we partner on this maybe? And what came out of it is what we showed you here today, which is about a hybrid cloud marketplace that is very much focused on OpenShift and uses OpenShift as a deployment platform in order to truly deliver that cloud-like experience that makes the marketplace very, very valuable. And so that's really the, the inception of that. Um, and of course, there's a good overlap and correlation between customers of Red Hat and customers of IBM. So I think also from a go-to-market motion of how we actually communicate, position, deliver value, we can collaborate very effectively uh, with this um, and, uh, and basically stay true to our identity at Red Hat, continue to be neutral, um, but uh, also basically tend a little bit into the trust that enterprises award to IBM for handling their money, because that's basically what they do here in this case. Um, if they if they buy things in this digital way, awesome. So we only have less than two minutes left. So do, do you want to talk about the future at all, or is are we at a good wrapping point? You tell me. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, honestly, I, with only two minutes, I cannot obviously uh, talk very deeply. But I, but I can share a couple areas of focus that 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 we have. Um, of course, one one area of focus is continue to build out the inventory of the marketplace. Much like I said earlier, right? A platform is only as useful as what you can do with it. For the marketplace, that means things in there. So if you have specific suggestions, specific needs, if anyone wants something in there, let us know and we will yeah. work with that vendor. So that's part one, we're continuously doing that. Um, as I said earlier, we are expanding the inventory. Katie touched on data models. I mentioned some of the more software as a service premises that wouldn't necessarily run on the cluster, but are still adding value to the overall experience and to what, what the customer tries to do with the cluster. So that's another area where we're looking to expand. From a functionality point of view, I think it is all about on-demand models, spend aggregation across cloud. So we're really getting, we're doubling down on some of these business model capabilities, mm -hmm. um, especially for cloud services. Um, next week is Red Hat Summit, where we will make some announcements uh, in, in that area. And the marketplace is always part of the total solution at, at a minimum, like as the billing engine of how you get your aggregated bill. Uh, in some cases, also as part of the overall experience as to how you would access a cloud service that is delivered by Red Hat or by any of Red Hat's partners. Um, so that's another whole area that we are opening up uh, as of next week. Uh, in that area so a lot more to come next week check in with us and we can of course come back here or uh, in, in a couple of months and give and talk about that more if there's interest especially when we've ex expanded into more geos as well right oh right exactly. yes geo expansion very important yes yes, yes. It, it's somewhat limiting to only be in the us especially as a european i can say that with a lot mm -hmm. of uh, passion uh, but <laughs> we will we will get there we will get there we have a plan and we will be soon in uh hopefully lots more different countries awesome well, we need to clear the channel for our friends over at Dev Nation. So thank you very much, Katie. Thank you very much, Lars, for coming on. Thank you, audience, for watching. And we'll see you next time on In the Clouds. Thanks for having Thanks, us, everyone. Chris. Thanks, everyone.